Okay, a um, little bit of a workshop update today. We've got this MGR V8 turned up for us today. Uh, came in on a trailer. It's uh, apparently cut out on the customer a couple of times. Uh, we don't believe it's had any ignition upgrades or um, the ECU upgrade done. So Steve's just working his, his body into that gap there. Hello. So he can find the uh, ECU. Oh, is it no air conditioning? No, it's no air conditioning, which nice. is excellent. That's made it nicer for you. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we're getting the Optimax ECU chip, uh, ignition upgrades, and uh, which obviously will transform the way it drives. Just pop the bonnet stay up here. Um, and believe the ignition system is probably what's causing it to intermittently cut. So obviously we'll put some mileage on the vehicle afterwards to make sure we're happy with it. So let's have a look here. Eight millimeter high silicon, high temperature silicon plug leads. Not MagnaCore, so they'll be being changed. We're on a standard amplifier down there. So we'll do the RPI ignition amplifier upgrade. Um, the airflow meter looks rather new and shiny. Hopefully it's not a brand new one, because we know they're not very good. Um, Bosch coil down there already. Looks relatively new, so maybe not, don't need to change that. Uh, someone made up a little bung for the idle adjuster, which probably means they've been struggling to get the idle right because it isn't chipped. And let's have a look. Vacuum pipe. Someone has changed the vacuum pipe on the plan chamber. So uh, it's obviously had something done to it before. Um, but yeah, we'll keep you posted on this one. It's uh, fairly easy for us to, to go through now. Uh, we've done quite a few. The ECU is located up there. When they have air conditioning, there's a big box down here and uh, the aircon unit and they're actually tucked up behind it but this one's much easier to get hold of so we'll uh, pop that out and put a chip in there sorry steve i'm in your way so uh, let's have a little look in the workshop see what's going on in there we're always surprised every time we see an mg that hasn't been done because we've done so many these days uh, the westfield here this is now uh, now actually sold so we're just going over, over things, tidying a couple of bits up. We had some wiring under here to tidy up, which Flory's doing at the moment. A rev counter to fix, and how's yeah. it going, mate? Yeah. All sorted? Okay, yeah. The rev counter working? Yeah, yeah. Okay, do you want to fire it up? Yeah. Make sure you're out of gear. One working rev counter. Excellent. And you're doing all the lights, are you, and everything? Yeah, everything is done. Okay, cool. Nice one. Yeah. Well good, so uh, yeah, this will be leaving us uh, in a couple of days. Just sorting out a few little loose ends on it. We'll also give it a nice road setup as well. It's driving really nicely, but I think uh, we can just spend a little bit more time setting it up. Um, classic Range Rover, the brake lines are now located where they're meant to be. Um, around this side as well not too much happened on that one Chevy's now finished as well we have just been uh, playing with fuel tanks because it's got two fuel tanks so right and left there's a switch on the dashboard inside which um, the customer thought was working but wasn't 100% certain and uh, there's a little switch down here if I can put a flash on I think I can um, but yeah right and left but um, no matter where it is, it's always on the left tank, so uh, we've got a few options of correcting that, but I think for now, uh, customer just wants to enjoy it. It's now driving a hell of a lot better since our setup. And uh, yeah, the customer popped down yesterday to have a drive, was over the moon with it. I've now turned the brightness up on here and shouldn't have. There we go, it's better. Um, engine building. I think the 4.6 stage three is coming on nicely. Uh, still waiting for the donor engine for the 3.9 for all the ancillaries but the 4.6 stage 3 is almost fully dressed now just waiting for some belts to come in and uh, we've got ported intake manifold on here so just waiting for the carbon fibre intake it's only having a single carbon fibre intake but it'll still look amazing under the bonnet uh, Holly as always has worked his magic and made the engine look gorgeous there's quite a bit of time involved in making sure everything's cleaned down properly and, and looking right. So we're proud of the engine and the customer will be happy with it too. 
Uh, obviously going to be running 14 CUX hot wire injection system. So uh, it'll have a fuel rail adapter put on the back here, rising rate fuel pressure regulator. Um, actually it won't be rising rate because it's hot wire so it'll be a, a flat rate one. And a uh, Tornado ECU chip. We'll drop a new distributor in there with the RPI amplifier and magna core plug leads. And Holly's now started building another engine. So this one is going to be a four litre. Uh, so it's a four litre cross bolted engine. This will be one going up on the dyno test cells uh, for our client that has them for, um, for work on dynos. And uh, I think this is number three of this batch of five. Uh, I think we're coming up to a building 35 engines. So this will be number 33, I believe, uh, for this client. So uh, this is actually one of the much rarer Coscast blocks. See Coscast on the on the side there. So these were actually um, brand new casting. I'm actually going to spin this over. Uh, the crank's bolted in, so it's safe to do so. Let me spin this round. Okay. So whereas Rover's castings, I'll just switch over to a Rover block over here. Whereas Rover's castings were effectively chiselled out through the centre here. You can tell a Coscast block straight away because they're actually machined out um, and because they did brand new tooling for all of the castings everything's actually central so the water jackets that we've previously discussed about not being central um, they, uh, they're absolutely spot on on the Coscast block although looking at this Rover block I think things weren't too bad because where they've machined out for the uh, tappet holes there isn't any machining marks on the, the, the valley here uh, whereas on a rover block quite often you'll see uh, actually this one has, has a little bit here you can see it's machined out where the uh, milling machine has come down and milled out for the tappet um, but on these obviously everything's perfectly symmetrical because they redid the tooling for them unfortunately they stopped making them though so this is a block that's been uh, pressure tested top hat linered and is uh, now being built up for the test cell. So hopefully that's been a nice little update for you today. Um, we'll do another update later on. I think next week we should have the SD1 back in the workshop. Uh, it's just down the paint shop having a sort of final inspection on the paint job, a couple of touch-up bits, and um, yeah, that will be back in the workshop. So we'll be full steam ahead on completing that project. Should be nice. Okay, bye for now.